Last few days and weeks, extreme MAGA Republicans tried to walk away from that deal, voting for deep, drastic spending cuts from 30 to 80 percent that would have been devastating for millions of Americans. They failed again. They failed again, and we stopped them. But I'm under no illusions that they'll be back again. All right, so that was President Biden earlier today. House Republicans, led by Kevin McCarthy, for now have just six weeks to get their act together and pass a long-term funding bill. Joining me now is Democratic Congresswoman Melanie Stansberry of New Mexico. Congresswoman, it's great to see you again. Thanks for coming back on the show. Um, let's start by talking about what the near future could look like for Speaker McCarthy. W would you support a motion to vacate him? And do you think this is an attempt by Republicans to distract from the broader chaos within their party? Well, it's absolutely an effort to distract from the complete lack of leadership and chaos that's happening within their party. But I do think there are factions within the Republican conference that genuinely do want to take the speaker out. But, you know, my message for McCarthy is it's not our circus and he's not our clown. We stand <laughs> united behind Hakeem Jeffries to be the next speaker. And, you know, it's not up to Democrats to bail him out. He's got to work it out within his own conference. We don't even know what kind of procedural motions may come to the floor in the coming days or weeks, but it's really up to him to figure out how to manage his conference and for the members of that conference to have legitimate, serious leadership that's able to govern this country. Let me ask you about the short-term spending bill. Obviously, it does not include funding for Ukraine. That gave Democrats on the Senate side at least some uh, pause there for a moment, but the White House is focused on turning that around before uh, mid-November. Earlier today, President Biden said to stop playing games games and actually get it done. What would you like to see moving forward? What does it what does getting it done look like in the short term? Yeah, I mean, we need to bring a bipartisan effort to the floor very quickly to fund our aid to Ukraine. It's very clear that Ukraine needs continued military support in its efforts to push back against the Russian invasion. And it's important for our democracy. I think what a lot of people need to understand is that this isn't just about Ukraine and the safety and the sovereignty of that country, which, of course, is very important, but it's about the survival of Western democracy. And and American engagement and support for Ukrainian efforts is vital to the future of global democracy. So we need to get a resolution to the House floor quickly and get that aid to Ukraine. Uh, of course, we recently saw the, um, you know, plenty of other Republican manufactured chaos and perhaps most notably the House Oversight Committee holding its first impeachment inquiry hearing into Biden. I was actually struck by some of the comments that you made, and I want to play uh, just a brief part of your remarks from that hearing. Let's be clear about what this hearing actually is. It's an effort to undermine our democracy, to diminish Donald Trump's own two impeachments. This is not a serious inquiry. This is not a serious hearing. In fact, the witnesses here don't even believe there's enough evidence to impeach. And you also, at the end of that clip, which we cut out, but you pointed to the fact that members of the Republican Party did not even attend uh, that hearing. So you really undercut a lot of um, their argument. But I just wanted you to expand on the first part of your remarks there, the, the part about this is a threat to our democracy um, and how it poses such a threat. Yeah, well, it's very clear that this fake impeachment hearing is all about Donald Trump. It's very clear when you follow the evidence that Donald Trump called for an impeachment inquiry. He's very clear on his own social media posts that the reason why he wants this impeachment is to undermine the justice system, which is investigating him for criminal <laughs> activity. It's part of his own efforts to undermine his political opponent in the 2024 election. And so in that way, it is is part of Donald Trump's continued criminal pattern of trying to use our democratic institutions to put forward his own political agenda. And after we saw the 2020 election, his efforts to foment an insurrection in the Capitol and to steal an election, I think that it's very chilling. It's part of his continued pattern to undermine our democracy and fair and free elections and to use the resources of the government to do so. How does the road ahead look 
for Republicans who are trying to push this evidence-free inquiry? Do you think it will actually have a political cost, or do you think that they, they and their constituents in their districts are so siloed off from the reality of America and what Americans really want from a governing party that it will not have any political consequence for them? You know, I think it's clear that there is a portion of the GOP's base that is, as you say, very siloed off from broader media coverage. But I think that what was on full display in the six plus hours of that hearing was a complete lack of evidence and seriousness. In fact, what was particularly strange about the hearing is that their own star witness in his opening statement in the first few minutes of his statement right. said, I do not personally believe that there there is sufficient evidence to meet the standard of impeachment. You know, I was like, okay, great, let's gavel and get this thing <laughs> over with. Why are we even holding this hearing? Yeah, I was going to say. So, they, you know, it, it, I think it, it was very evident that they don't have evidence. Yeah, sorry, to, not to me, not to speak over you. I just meant to. It, it's crazy to think that Jonathan Turley, who has become the darling of everything the Republicans want to do with any legal justification, is literally coming out and saying, "I don't think this actually raises to the level of impeachment uh, inquiry." Uh, Congresswoman Melanie Stansberry, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much for making time for us this week. I know it's been very busy for you.